Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Zakia Ahmad and I'm an undergraduate student at 10 November Institute of Technology. This is the science video project for the semi-final round of International Arizona Science Competitions. First of all, I've already prepared the tools and materials for this project. I got this uh, elastic materials. I use this spiral spring with a hook on it and the load that can be considered as point objects and the mass is 260 gram and this is the massive straight rod this is the rope whose mass is negligible okay first i'm going to assemble all these tools and materials into one system so here's the system it is a simple system where the spring is attached to this rod using rope and then the load is attached to the spring. Okay, so how the system move? So this is a system where the load is at the equilibrium point. So if I pull this down below the equilibrium point, it will move up and down that we see some kind of oscillation right here. Okay, the system has two constraints. One constraint comes from the force acting on the spring. In this case, the force is the weight of the load attached on the spring. The other constraints come from the fixed support. This spring is fixed to a specific location, right here, which restricts its movement in all directions except on its own length. This fixed position acts as a constraint. Therefore, the system has two constraints. In this system, the spring is fixed at one end, restricting its movement in all directions except along the axis of the spring itself. Therefore, the only independent movement the system has is compression or extension along the single axis. Since the spring's movement is limited to one independent direction, the system has one degree of freedom. Now that we see some kind of oscillation in the system, it means that we can get the position function over time, which we can call as motion equation. Okay, I'm going to get the motion equation by solving a second order differential equation. Our equation is going to come straight from Newton's second law, which is force. The force acting on the spring is equal to its mass times its acceleration. If y of t is the position function, then y prime is the velocity and y double prime is the acceleration. So the total force acting on the spring is equal to its mass times is the second derivative of the function y of t. There are two forces that I want to consider acting on the spring. Every spring has this first one, minus k where that's a positive constant, times the position y. So that's just minus k times y. Some springs will have another force which I write as minus c times the velocity y prime. The first one always happens and this is what we call the restoring force. This is like Hooke's law that's often stated as force equals k times x where x is the amount of displacement and k is the constant of proportionality. In this case, the spring moves up and down so that its displacement is on the y-axis, so I use y. The other term is called damping. I like to think of it as a force that slows the spring down, so y prime is the velocity and c is going to be a constant proportionality. So damping is something that impedes the motion in the context of a vertical spring mass system, I like to think of it as the air friction. So, if the system has no friction, then there will be like no damping. Let's now move everything to the left hand side. We have the mass times the acceleration plus the damping term plus ky equals zero in the absence of external forcing. So if we're just looking at the spring's natural motion, this would be the second order linear differential equation with constant coefficient to characterize the spring's motion. Here m and k are positive and then damping is greater than or equal to zero because it's possible that the spring experience has no damping. 
Okay, now let's find the motion equation of our system. In our system, there is actually air friction that affects the movement of the spring. But this air friction is generally pretty small though, so we tend to ignore it. So we're in a situation of having no damping force, and our coefficient c is 0. And then the mass is 260 gram, that is 0 0.26 kilogram. Alright, so that's 2 out of 3 coefficient that we need. And from Hooke's law, we can calculate and get the spring constant, that is 26.84 newton per meter. Alright, so we have m, c, and k. We can now say that the spring has a second order equation. And that is 0.26y double prime plus 0y prime plus 26.84y equals 0. Alright, let's keep going. We know that 0.26y double prime plus 26.84y equals 0. This gives us roots that look like this. The characteristic equation is 0.26d squared plus 26.84 equals 0. And the d squared is negative tells us that the roots are pure imaginary as expected because we're in a situation where there is no damping. And the roots are plus or minus 10.16 times i. Okay, in our system, we know that the spring is released from rest from a position above or below the equilibrium. From rest means that y prime of 0 is 0. It wasn't given like an initial push or anything like that. It was just released from rest. So initial position is y o and initial velocity is 0. With that, we can actually write down the equation of the spring over time. We know that, in general, the position function y of t is going to be c1 times cosine of 10.16t plus c2 sine of 10.16t to go ahead and differentiate. The velocity is then minus 10.16c1 sine of 10.16t plus 10.16c2 cosine of 10.16t. Alright, we have the two initial conditions that we need to find c1 and c2. When the times is 0, the position is yo. So y of 0 is yo, so we know that c1 is yo. y prime of 0, the initial velocity, is 0. So, so that's going to be 10.16c2. Okay, so that tells us that c2 is 0. Overall, the position of the spring is actually just a cosine function. It's going to be yo cosine 10.16t. Alright, now we have our motion equation for this spring system.